Oh yeah, peace everybody, what's good? This is that boy George Malachi Williams, and you are now tuned to New Media Today USA. Let's go. All right, everybody, this particular episode right here, man, we want to talk about um, my personal opinion. There are too many champions from one sanctioning body in boxing, particularly the lightweight division and the welterweight division, and I'm explaining why. As you can see, I'm on one of my favorite um, YouTube channels, um, Bushido Boxing. You know, he's interviewing Bernie, uh, Bernie the Boxer. Uh, from Team uh, Terrence Crawford. So I really, really like Bernie the Box. I really, really like um, Bushido. There's a lot of uh, different media outlets that I really like, um, even from the LDBC, even though I do give them hell about their bias against Terrence Crawford. But at the same time, you know, um, they put in a lot of work in the game, and I respect their grind and their hustle. But I'm not going to cap for them or anybody. So other than that, that what, other than that, let me get to the topic. So right now, man, um, I'm, I was doing some research, and I see that in the welterweight division, now, you guys might not have known this, but in the welterweight division, we have three WNBA, no, WBA champions. <clears throat> now, as you know, um, Manny Pacquiao fought Terrence, fought um, Keith Thurman in 2019. I think he fought him in July 2019. He beat him and won the WBA super middleweight champion, right? Championship belt. So Manny Pacquiao is known as the WBA super middleweight championship belt. There's only one problem. Um, Ugas is the WBA regular champion. And Virgil Ortiz is the WBA gold champion. So my point is this. Which one is the real belt? You see what I'm saying? Like, wait a minute. Now, you have three different champions, three different WBA champions. How is that possible? Now, we know that uh, Errol Spence is the WBC IBF champion. That's undisputed. And we know that Terrence Bud Crawford is the WBO welterweight champion. That's undisputed. But what is disputed is you have three different champions from the WBA sanctioning body who gave out these belts um, in the welterweight division. So let's say um, Terrence Crawford was to fight Virgil Ortiz and he won the WBA gold champion. Will he be considered a unified champion? Will he be considered he is the real WBA champion? But what about Manny Pacquiao? What about Virgil Ort What about um, um, Ugas? You see what I'm saying? My whole point is this, man. You know, these sanctioning bodies is coming in you know, by them creating multiple belts of the same, multiple champions of the same belt, right? You know, you're creating multiple versions of the same belt, basically what I'm saying. You have the WBA Super, the WBA Regular, and the WBA Gold. To me, that's that's too much confusion. That You know, how are you going to have, you know, you know how are you going to have all of these different fighters are champions of the same belt? Which one is the real belt? You see what I'm saying? And why is it, why do you feel that it's needed for you to create multiple belts? And we, I don't even want to talk about the lightweight division, right? Let's go to the lightweight division. The lightweight division, um, as we know, uh, Tiafimo Lopez beat Lomachenko last year, 2020, and he and he took all of his belts. Lomachenko had the um, he had the WBA super lightweight belt. You know, um, uh, uh, Tiafimo beat him and took that. He won the WBO and he won the IBF. Those are legit belts, right? Okay, super lightweight champion, WBA, WBO, and IBF. Tiafimo won that. And you, as you know, Lomachenko had the um, the, the, the French fries belt. AKA the franchise belt. He had the WBC franchise belt. I'll tell you how he got that belt. He asked Suleiman, uh, which is the president of uh, WBC, uh, to give him the franchise belt because Devin Haney was his mandatory. Lomachenko used to hold, used to hold the WBC lightweight championship belt, right? He he was the lightweight champion WBC. But since since um, Devin Haney was his which is one of my favorite fighters, was his mandatory. Lomachenko didn't want to fight Devin Haney. So, and, and so instead of fighting his mandatory, which was Devin Haney, he decided to relinquish the belt. He vacated the belt. And, and Devin Haney ended up fighting for the vacant WBC belt, and that's how he got it. Devin Haney preferred to fight Lomachenko like a man in the middle of the ring, fight him and beat him or lose, either or, to fight Lomachenko for the belt. Lomachenko didn't want to fight him. He ducked him. So then he asked um, um, WBC president uh, Suleiman to um, to uh, give him a franchise belt. So basically, the franchise belt is a duck belt. When you are a fighter and you come up and someone becomes your mandatory that you don't want to fight, that you think is going to give you problems, you rather relinquish that belt and ask for a different version of that belt. So WBC created a franchise belt f f uh, specifically for those purposes. And I'm going to tell you who they did it for first, as you already know. Canelo Alvarez. Now, another one of my favorite fighters is Jamal Charlo. Canelo, Jamal Charlo was the mandatory, he was the WBC mandatory um, welterweight champion, welterweight um, uh, um, fighter to, to challenge Lomachenko for his WBC belt. You see what I'm saying? 
You know, so Canelo had two options. You either fight Jamal Charlo because he's your mandatory or you vacate the belt. Canelo chose option two. He vacated the belt because he didn't want to fight Jamal Charlo. Was he afraid of Jamal Charlo? I don't know. But it's kind of suspect when you refuse to fight your mandatory and you rather vacate your title. Something that you fought hard and worked hard for to get, you vacated the belt. You know what I mean? In order to, um, you vacated the belt, you know, in order to avoid fighting your mandatory. So that Canelo did that. And then what happened was once Canelo gave up the belt, he went ahead and asked Suleiman to create a title for him. So they end up creating the WBC, uh, uh, middle, they end up creating the WBC franchise belt in the middleweight division, and that's how that whole thing came about. And ever since then, we have French fries belts all over the, all over boxing. You know, I call the franchise uh, belt the French fries belt because that's exactly what it is. It's all fries, no ketchup. You see what I'm saying? Because if you're not willing to fight your mandatory, and you're going to give these fighters an out by saying, "Hey, you don't have to fight this guy," you know what I mean? We'll create a belt for you, so you'll still have that um, that symbol of being a WBA or a WBC champion, but you know, but the but your belt that you vacated because you don't want to fight your mandatory, they're gonna be they're gonna have the opportunity to fight and get that belt. That's how Jamal Charlo got the got the belt, the WBC um the middleweight belt. The Jamal Charlo would rather fight Canelo. You see what I'm saying? He wanna fight Canelo, but he can't make the man get in the ring with him. You know, Canelo been ducking and dodging and picking and choosing and doing this and that and, you know, um, you know, all kind of stuff, right, instead of fighting his mandatories. You know, so certain certain fighters can do certain things that other fighters can't do. Per, another perfect example, like my main man um, in the lightweight division, you got Tank Davis. Tank Davis is the WBA regular lightweight title title holder. So he's a champion. He's a regular lightweight title um, champion. But Tiafimo Lopez is the WBA super lightweight champ. So now you have two champions in the lightweight division of the same sanctioned by the WBA champion, right? And, of course, Devin Haney is a WBC lightweight champion because Lomachenko gave that belt up, right? So now you have two WBC titles in um, title holders in the lightweight. You have the franchise, which is, I, I, you know, I don't even know, you know, I, I don't even think that's a real belt. But you had a WBC franchise belt, and then you had a WBA, WBC lightweight champion. And I'm pretty sure they probably have a regular champion. Now, Devin Haney is widely known as the champ from the WBC. That, that's facts. You see what I'm saying? But Tank has a WBA lightweight title, and then Tiafimo has a WBA super lightweight title. So I'm assuming that super lightweight holds weight over regular. I'm assuming that. But, um, you know, I, you know, we don't know. But my point, my, the point of what I'm saying is there's too much, there's too many, too many belts. And, that, and, 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 and I know you guys might think I'm tripping, but in my opinion, there's just too many belts. Hold on for a minute, guys. All right, guys, I'm back. I just had to put the video on pause because my kids was being very loud in the background. Um, but anyways, back to what I was saying, right? Um, in the lightweight division, you know, Tank has the WBA regular title. You see what I'm saying? And then Tia Fimo has the WBA super lightweight title. So now you have two, two different champions of the same sanctioning body in the same weight class. So, you know, it, it, to me, it doesn't make any sense. Why is the WBA and the WBC creating multiple belts? multiple titles in order to create multiple champions. The only thing I can think of is it has to be financial. Maybe it's a way for them to generate more money. Maybe it's a way that, hey, listen, if you have a title, you know what I mean, you have to pay sanctioning fees. So if WBC created three different belts, you know, you have three different fighters who may be champions of those three different belts that have to pay sanctioning fees. You see what I'm saying? That's the only thing I can think of. Other than that, that's the only thing that, that can kind of make sense to me. But from a champion standpoint, it's like, dude, you just want one belt. You see what I'm saying? I want to be widely known as a WBC lightweight champion like Devin Haney is, but it's kind of hard for that when you have a conflicting belt with the franchise belt. You see what I'm saying? And they probably have a WBC regular champion as well, whoever that may be. So, um, you know, guys, tell me what do you think. And also, do you think that, um, you know, that Manny Pacquiao should be stripped of the WBA title? He hasn't fought since 2019 July. You see what I'm saying? He hasn't fought since 2019, July, and he has, is there's too many champions. There's too many champions, right? So now, if he hasn't fought since um, um, July 2019, you see what I'm saying? Now, you have other fighters who want to fight for that belt, but they can't because Manny Pacquiao is holding the belt hostage. You see what I'm saying? Because he's in the Philippines, you know, he's a senator, he, you know, and I understand that he's doing what he has to do for his, for his family, for his people of the Philippines. That's fine. If that's what you need to do, Manny Pacquiao, do that. But don't hold the belt hostage. 
Don't hold the WBA hostage. And then, you know, like, because you, you have Ugas, who's, who's Manny Pacquiao's number one mandatory. So Manny Pacquiao's going to have to fight Ugas soon, or, he, or he's going to be stripped of that belt, which he should be stripped of that belt, because he hasn't defended it in a little over a year and a half. Right. And other people want to fight for that belt as well. Virgil Ortiz is Virgil Ortiz is the WBA gold champion. You see what I'm saying? And apparently the WBA super welterweight championship belt is the one that holds presidents over all of them. So since they and, and that's the one that Terrence Crawford wants to fight for. But Crawford will never get that Pacquiao fight. You couldn't get that fight on uh, Crawford when Manny Pacquiao, when you and him was in the same was the same promotional company. So you damn sure not going to get it now. You see what I'm saying? So, um. You know, that's the thing. So so Crawford, don't, he can forget about Manny Pacquiao. And Spence, I doubt if you'll be able to get Manny Pacquiao because if Crawford couldn't get him when they was in the same promotion company, I, what makes you think you're going to be able to get him even though he's with Al Heyman? You see what I'm saying? I don't think Manny Pacquiao will fight either Crawford or Spence because, you know, these guys are too young, they're too dangerous, and Manny Pacquiao's too old and he's too small. So I just don't see that fight happening. But my whole gripe is... We have too many champions. We shouldn't have multiple WBA champions in the in the welterweight division and in the lightweight division. And we shouldn't have multiple WBC champions in the lightweight division. You see what I'm saying? So, guys, just tell me what do you think. Do you think that I'm tripping about um, these sanctioning bodies creating too many belts, too many champions in the same weight division? Or do you think that, hey, listen, man, uh, Malachi, you tripping, man. You know, go ahead and let the sanctioning bodies do what they do. Other than that, that's it. This is our boy, George Malachi Williams. Please like, share, and subscribe. Um, to the uh, like, like this video, share this video, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And other than that, man, um, I just want to thank y'all. Other than that, peace.